let's look at problem C from today's code forces. Uh, so the solution is kind of simple, but proving it is, is a bit of a pain. So anyway, what do we have? We have a circle with n people numbered 1 through n. Uh, so we start with person 1, and then he's going to throw the ball to person k plus 1, who's going to throw the ball to person 2k plus 1, uh, and so on. And it's around the circle, so it's always mod n. Uh, and we stop when person 1 gets the ball back eventually. Uh, so if n is 6 and k is 4, we start with person 1, who passes it to 1 plus 4 is 5, who passes it to 5 plus 4 mod 6 is 3, uh, 5 plus 4 is 9, right? 9 mod 6 is 3, who passes it to 3 plus 4 is 7, 7 mod 6 is 1. Uh, so it goes from 1 to 5 to 3 to 1, um, and then it stops because we got back to the start. So the fun value is just the sum of the people who touch the ball. So in this case, it's 1 plus 5 plus 3 is 9. So given n, we want to get, we want to compute the sum, oh sorry, the set of possible fun values uh, over all choices for k. Uh, so let's look at what's going on. Um, so we're going to relabel the people 0 through n minus 1 instead of 1 through n. So then the procedure is we just go from 0 to k to 2k to 3k, uh, all mod n, and we stop when we get 0. So let d be the GCD of k and n. Uh, so the first thing to say is that we know that we stop at n over d. Uh, why is this true? Well, n over d times k is the same thing as n times k over d, uh, and this is a multiple of n because d divides k. Uh, so this is n times some integer. Uh, so the second thing to prove is that we actually get to d n over d. Right? That's the first time that we stop. Um, so suppose that we have some a such that uh, we've stopped on like the eighth person, right? which means that n is divide ak. Uh, so that's the same thing as saying that n over d divides a times k over d. Uh, now that we've taken out the common factor between n and k, uh, we know that they are co-prime. So we have that n over d divides a. Uh, so a must be at least n over d. Um, so we know that we stop at n over d exactly, and we don't stop earlier. Uh, so the third thing that we need to prove is that all of the n over d numbers that we hit are different. Uh, this is not too hard. Suppose that uh, we hit the same thing um, on sort of second a and second b. Uh, then we, we should have gotten back to 0 earlier. So we stop before we hit a. So they must all be different. Uh, and the last thing we're going to prove is that we only hit the multiples of d. Um, and this is true because, so we get to person a times k mod n on the eighth second, which is the same as a times k minus b times n for however many multi you know b's, however many n's we need to get down back into range zero to n minus one. Uh, and this, if we just take out the d's, is the same as a times d times k over d plus b times d times n over d. So we've just taken out the d from k and n. And this is a multiple of d, right? It's d times this stuff minus this stuff. Uh, so everything that we hit is a multiple of d. So putting all of this together, we know that we hit n over d numbers, and they're all multiples of d. And there are only n over d multiples of d, right? There's 0, n over d, 2, n over d, and so on until we get back up to n. So those are exactly the numbers that we hit. Uh, so the sum of those is just d times um, this simple uh, arithmetic series. Right, so the sum of 0, 0 plus d plus 2d plus you know, d minus 1 times d. Uh, so just take out a common factor of d from all of that junk, and we get d times 0 plus 1 all the way up to n minus 1, n over d minus 1. Um, and then remember that we re-index them from 1 to n to 0 to n minus 1, so we need to add back a factor of n over d, because all the ids are one bigger than we said. Um, yeah. So this is how we get the fun value for a specific k, and notice that it only depends on d, not on k. So getting the set of fun values is the same as getting the set of, uh, we can enumerate it by enumerating the possible values for d. Uh, we know that d is a divisor of n, since it's the greatest common divisor. 
of n and k. Uh, so the possibilities for d are just the divisors of n, and we can find the divisors of n in uh, O squared n time, which is fast enough for n is a billion. Um, so this function is just doing this sum, uh, right? The well-known fact that one plus two plus three up to n is n times n plus one over two. Um, and then this is getting the fun value for n and d, which is just the sum uh, up to n over d minus one times d uh, plus n over d which is the same thing that we proved earlier. Uh, right, so now we can actually solve the problem, finally. So we read an n, we get, I mean, we're gonna make a set of fun values. And then for all possible divisors um, up to square root of n, uh, if d actually divides n, then insert the fun value for d and n over d. Um, and this is a set because we might get duplicates somehow uh, in particular, if n, if n is a square, then we're going to add, you know, the square root twice. Uh, so then turn that set into a vector. This will automatically be sorted because sets are sorted, or set iterators are sorted. Uh, and then just go through and print out the elements of that vector. And that's the problem.